What's going on there guys? Good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Tuesday, January 17th, 2023. It's about 12 19 p.m. here along the west coast in California. Now the latest quake here on the globe shows a 1.5 up into the Alaska region. All right, let's go ahead and check out the activity here across the USGS map as we look at the flat scale model now yesterday late last night we were watching some activity ramp up here into southeastern alaska up here at the uh oh, the northern northeastern tip of the gulf of alaska region um, seeing that 4.4 coming in we did see some activity work its way down south into the west coast region where we've seen a little swarming activity kick up uh, overnight and early this morning including a 3.3 well off the coast of petrolia and uh, just prior to the Cascadia subduction zone level, uh, this here is at the very southern end of the Gorda Plate, just north of the plate boundary here. Subduction zone sits uh, just to the east, uh, just a little distant ways from that 3.3. Uh, uh, and it looks like we did see some twos and some other smaller quakes in there as well, uh, following this 3.3 and also uh, prior to that. And some of this earthquake activity uh, roughly about 23 kilometers deep or so 26 uh, and that's getting down in there we've noticed a little trend of uh, a combination of trimmer activity here in northern california over the past week or so uh, followed up by um, earthquake activity upstream if you will on the map it's going to be more to the left here as we get shallower towards the subduction zone level so kind of keep an eye on that area uh, it's definitely shown some increasing activity uh, in recent days. That's the southern end of the Cascadia there in northern California. Typical movement around the uh, Mount Kanaktai. That's a clear lake volcanic field. That's, uh, well, hydrothermal operations in full force. That's going to be earthquake activity up there. The rest of California, very spotty. Uh, not a whole lot going on as we look at southern California. Uh, we did see a noticeable increase in activity down here south, though, into the South America region well south of california obviously seen uh, quite a bit of movement kicking up here overnight uh, including um, looks like four 4.4 looks to be the magic number out here quite a bit uh, some of it deep some of it uh, shallow here's a pretty deep earthquake underneath brazil 635 kilometers deep for a 4.3 now that's one of the deepest ones i've seen in this area um, in quite a long time now, it's not a large quake, but it's way down. There's something brewing uh, into the Peru Chile Trench. Uh, that one was followed up here a few hours later by some surface earthquake activity, a little bit shallower. can't really say surface because it's still down there, about 157 kilometers deep, 4.4. Uh, but notice this trend here. You get deeper movement, uh, and this is very similar to any subduction zone. Uh, deeper activity downstream, uh, way down there will trigger strain. That's how you get the strain and built up pressure. That's how you get these mountain ranges and volcanic activity uh, from that strain. Uh, so also earthquake activity. So that uh, 4.3, a couple hours later, almost right uh, parallel with it to the Peru Chile Trench, 4.4, but much shallower, 157 kilometers deep. So we'll watch this area potentially uh, for some larger scale activity. But overall, seismic activity has been increasing here in South America. Uh, since last night, we got a total of about seven earthquakes so far, including that deep one. Now, a look at the EMSC model here shows, uh, well, obviously some other earthquake activity below the 4.0 threshold that the USGS uses, uh, including some threes in the mix. So this is our hot spot today for earthquake activity, ramping up fairly significantly. Um, other areas such as New Zealand, Fiji, uh, New Zealand area, Fiji area, all calming down uh, we did see some activity yesterday but nothing new um, and still seeing a little cluster of movement here into the java trench area indonesia region and just south uh, actually into the philippines there they've seen some activity as well with a haltage and i say haltage because we really haven't seen too much earthquake activity work its way around the bend here uh, into the himalayas uh, Myanmar area and down to uh, the very northern end of the java trench this is still seismically inactive um, i know it's active obviously because we're getting a lot of strain built up there but uh, no earthquake activity so this is our spot to watch potentially here for some larger activity here in the coming days 
Uh, what is working its way up over here to the west a little bit. Uh, di a different type of setup here, though, is uh, some activity. It looks like a 4.5 coming into the northern Iran area, about 10 kilometers deep. That one coming in uh, earlier, it looks like. Uh, let me see here. Go back to the USGS map. Let's see if they've reported it. They have. Um, yeah, northern uh, Iran. Iran. Okay. Got to remember that. Sometimes I forget the correct pronunciation over here of these uh, countries. 4.5, 10 kilometers deep. Aside from that, some microquake activity showing up here across the Mediterranean, as noted on the EMSC model. Uh, there's some threes and twos in the mix as well. Uh, also, if you look a little bit further west, here out in the Atlantic Ocean, some movement kicking up after some fairly quiet uh, activity. It's been relatively quiet here over the past, oh, I don't know, week or so. Uh, looks like we're returning for some uh, movement out here. 5.1 near the Azores Island. That's uh, coming in about 9 o'clock this morning. Up north here, off the coast of Greenland as well. 4.9 coming in late last night. These are divergent boundary, boundaries, fracture zones out here. Uh, separation of the seafloor. All right, uh, let's see what else do we have. I wanted to check out this Philippines here. I know we're bouncing, zigzagging back and forth here. Uh, this 5.2 came in, looks like uh, yesterday. Yesterday afternoon. Was that even on the map last night? I don't recall. Um, let's see what we got up here around the Philippine plate. One further earthquake, um, or another earthquake, I should say here, 4.6, 29 kilometers deep off the coast of Japan. Remember, we have been seeing a little bit of deeper activity here uh, over the past couple days. Um, seven days, 4.5 and above, shows some of that deeper movement into the Izu Trench including a 6.3 that kicked up there a couple days ago. Very deep, uh, large earthquake activity. Now, there's a couple different subduction zones around here. Uh, the Philippine plate is a very, uh, that's a very sensitive area in terms of plate dynamics. Um, this here, we did notice a little bit of trend of surface activity kicking up following those that uh, deeper movement quakes here, but apparently not enough. Uh, to produce any significant uh, size earthquake. Instead, that pressure has been transferred here to the west a little bit with that 4.6 coming in uh, into this area just off the coast of Japan, 29 kilometers deep. Uh, let's see, the big island of Hawaii lighting up a little bit out here, looks like near Pahala. Typical movement, 2.4, 28 kilometers deep in that area. No major changes to take note of across the area. And again, New Zealand, not a whole lot showing up. And also on the globe, not a whole lot showing up there for the folks of New Zealand at all. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and check out the volcanic drums. Let me go to the most recent one here today and uh, see what we got. Looks pretty quiet. I'm not really seeing a whole lot of activity at all across any of these uh, seismograph stations here. Calm and clear across New Zealand today. Yellowstone National Park, um, they're into Wyoming. Are they working? Yes, they are. Looks like, um, what do we got here? This kind of looks like uh, some distant activity here showing up primarily on Moose Creek, Idaho. Showing up a little bit on the Promontory Station here as well. This is a signature I'm uh, chatting about about three or four hours ago. Now that could be a distant large quake somewhere. Uh, I'm trying to think. 940. Possibly it could be that one. That's a ways off there though. Um, there is, well, no, I take that back. It's going to be these right here. That's what we're seeing. 2.9, 2.3. A couple hours ago, Bancroft, Idaho. Soda Springs, Idaho area. Uh, near the Caribou Range. A couple different fault systems that run through here of the mountain ranges uh, just southeast of Pocatello, Idaho, five kilometers deep. So that is our, our uh, that's, that's the older map. That's going to be our earthquake activity down here around Moose Creek. Although that looks a little drawn out. That's a little odd signature there. So we'll continue to watch that, see how it plays out. Um, trimmer map from last night. Uh, see what we got here we didn't have much we had about six epicenters of trimmer 
Vancouver, Vancouver Island ranges up there. Nothing in the Northern California currently. All right, space weather activity. Pretty uh, mellow across the board right now. Uh, things are still elevated though in the SFI 228. Down though a little bit from, from the uh, 234 measurement a couple days ago. Now there is some massive sunspots facing us for folks. And if you have a solar telescope, um, you can see these sunspots easily. Uh, even if you had like a some solar sunglasses, uh, they make them. Don't use any typical sunglasses, that's for sure. Uh, you got to be they got to be designed specifically for observing the sun. Um, and I don't have any of those. Otherwise, I would be looking at this uh, because these are some massive sunspots and very visible easily. The magnetic structure here. Let's see what we got for. Uh, the dynamics of these massive sunspots. Now these are all turning into view, Earth view. So anything that does pop off that CME, uh, as far as like a CME goes, will be Earth directed and geo effective for sure. Um, that thing is growing like crazy right here. Uh, a couple of these sunspots are, so we'll continue to watch that and monitor it. Um, they're relatively stable, but they're getting larger. As far as the uh, magnetic structure there, we'll continue to watch it. 99% chance of a C-flare. M-flare at 60 and X-flare around 15. Now, 31, which is this big one? 3190 here harbors one of the most complex ones. That's a uh, Beta Gamma Delta class. And that does harbor a 5% chance for a X-flare. Uh, but again, this can uh, quickly, quickly... Um, progress and uh, get uh, unstable uh, and shoot off a good size flare so we'll watch that for sure um, over the last couple days though about two and a half days it's been relatively minor C flares uh, almost reached the uh, M flare category but just been crackling here with some M flare or uh, C flare activity and it's been relatively stable but um, don't let that fool you these things may be getting into position where they start uh, getting very active as they face the earth no major coronal holes facing us therefore uh, no major solar storms expected far as the auroras go green across the board current aurora forecast very very minimal alrighty folks um, have a good day out there stay safe and uh, it is sunny 54 degrees out here in northern California drying out a little bit I uh, can't say drying out because things are still pretty uh, fairly soggy and uh, muddy out here in Northern California. It's allowing a lot of greenery to kick up with the sunshine. Uh, so that's good. Uh, one more rain system into the area on Wednesday into Thursday, but that's about it. After that, things dry out um, even further. Going into February is questionable. We'll see how that plays out. Um, you know, we definitely need more rain, but we also need just a little bit of time to uh, dry out a little bit from all these storms we, we've uh, received here. Alrighty, take care, folks. We'll catch you guys uh, a little bit later on tonight. A little earthquake activity showing up there on the graph. <clears throat> Looks like uh, Dinsmore, Petrolia, uh, Northern California area. And that looks like it's going to be a uh, 2.0 earthquake coming into the area of uh, Northern California on that station there. And uh, that's, of course, associated with the Cascadia subduction zone. 2.0, 14 kilometers deep. So and we'll watch it. I mean, it's hard to say what's going on up here. We know what's, bu what's building up one day for the, the large mega quake nine pointer that will kick off up here along the Cascadia one day, but who knows when it's gonna happen. Just gotta be prepared and uh, stay safe out there. All right, we'll catch you guys a little bit later on tonight. Have a good one.